Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out this new Micro from FPV model. This is the uh, X9 Racer, and this is the follow-up to the KL EX90 that I reviewed uh, a couple months ago. They're putting some different components in here along with a, a new design. You got this uh, carbon fiber pod on the top here, and uh, Runcam Swift 2 now instead of the original Swift because it's using the voltage uh, monitor because the flight controller does not have an OSD now. So uh, they're going to a, a different route on the flight controller. It's not a beta flight flight controller, it's a race flight flight controller. It's the race flight millivolt. It's a 20 by 20 flight controller with an F4 uh, CPU, but there's no OSD on here, so we're using the voltage reading on the camera for that. And then they're using these uh, the race flight Spark 4 in 1 ESC. It's a, it's a BL Heli S ESC, 15 amps, uh, and it bursts up to 20 amps. So this is totally different from the KLEX90 where they're using uh, uh, Betaflight with an SV Racing F3 board and a MW OSD and a uh, Flycolor, it was a Flycolor Raptor S 12 amp 4 in 1 ESC, so different power setup here. The motors are the same however and the props are the same as well. They're still using the Dragonfly 1105 7500 kV motors, these are very good motors, and the same Jump Van 20 uh, 35 four bladed props. The video transmitter is also the same as well. It's underneath this receiver here. Uh, it's the same exact one and they have the button here on the side. Uh, they got the antenna kind of pointing down like this. Uh, the This model does not come with the receiver just like the uh, previous model, the KLEX90, so I elected to put my one of these FlySky receivers in here. This is the FS82 and it's heavy zip tied to the top on top of the video transmitter, so uh, in my case I had to set my video channel before I installed the receiver and then I just soldered it to these uh, solder points here um, that's going to be uh, uh, RX3 or Receive 3 or UART 3 and then we have power. Uh, I'll put a little chart up here on the pinouts because I believe if you're going to use FreeSky it's going to be this empty pin here that's going to be an inverted IBUS or in, sorry, inverted UART right there for that signal, and then DSM is behind, uh, I think, uh, behind that one there next to the um, UART 3, and then you have 3.3 volts behind this red pin here. So, anyway, I'll just put a little chart up here so you guys can take a look at that. Now, as I mentioned, this is a race flight flight controller, so that you cannot put beta flight on here as far as I know. So, you have to install the race flight um, configurator application on your computer and then connect via your USB port here to configure it. Now, when I set up my board and everything, uh, and I, I, I tried to spin up the motors, it would start violently vibrating due to D-term oscillation. And after uh, doing a bunch of things and just trying to, like, testing out stuff, uh, I, I determined that basically the way that the flight stack here was mounted was was causing the vibration. So I first tried soft mounting the motors. That didn't help at all. I changed all the uh, PIDs so the D gains and P gains were extremely low. That didn't help at all. It turned out the reason why the vibrations were occurring is that the USB port here was actually touching this top plate. And as you can see here there's a gap because I actually switched up this whole mounting uh, method. It was using these four of these long screws that are going through the stack up like this and uh, there was basically the, any vibration from the motors would go through the frame through these screws and into the flight stack even though they have these little rubber grommets on here uh, because the USB port was pressed up against the top plate any, any kind of vibration would cause an oscillation and it would start twitching like crazy but once I swapped these screws out I got rid of the steel screws and then I put some shorter nylon screws in here and then I put the nut on top that seemed to fix the vibrations and the, and the motors were running as hot. Still running pretty warm, still a little bit of vibration, um, but it's not as bad as before and actually it's flyable now. Now, the thing is you gotta make sure that this stack here isn't touching the, the, this plate here in any way, otherwise you're gonna have some problems. Now, I think the way that they have this set up here, you know, they have these pins that go into the ESC board here on, on this side, and then on the back you have some additional pins here. I think on mine it's a little bit uh, messed up. They didn't really uh, do a good job in terms of the work, uh, solder work, and there's a gap 
between the top pins and the bottom pins there. So you can see there's a little gap there. And the board is at a, a kind of a funny angle. Um, but it's not touching anything now, so it's okay. But I think that they could do a better job cleaning that up there so that there aren't, there aren't any vibrations. So I've already told them they should probably consider redesigning how they put the stack together and what kind of pins they're using here because obviously the flight controller board and the ESC board are basically pinned together even though there's these soft mounts here because the pins are hard hard connected. So they need to rethink this whole section here to make sure that there aren't any vibrations going into the gyro because it's an F4 gyro, it's a F4 flight controller. The gyro is pretty sensitive and it's running at probably a really high sampling rate like 8K. I don't know a whole lot about how race flight works, but it's the same issue where you have motor noise going into the flight controller gyro. It's going to cause it to twitch and then the motors get run really hot. So, you know, the, P the POD controller is a little bit different, but PODs work the same, pretty much the same. But I got to the point where the, vib the vibrations are gone. I was able to lower my P and D gains to the point where it's flyable. And I'll put a little, little graphic up here, uh, a screenshot of the PIDs I used for the flight. And you guys can uh, duplicate that if you want. Um, I'm not going to go over how to set up race flight because there's a lot of videos on that. And if you have questions about that, I could add some video links in the description. Uh, setting up race flight is actually quite a bit easier than beta flight because you install the application and you, you basically answer a bunch of questions, yes or no, or put in whatever values you want. And it does all, all these things automatically. I mean, like for example, um, you have to install the receiver first so that you can auto detect your, your transmitter and auto detects your protocol and everything for you. So there's, in terms of uh, setup, race flight is much easier to set up than beta flight, especially for someone that doesn't know anything about setting up stuff because it's, it's more intuitive and it's more user friendly. So there's really no point for me making a video on how to set it up because uh, it's pretty simple to do. The problem for me was getting rid of the vibrations and that was a uh, basically a design issue and hopefully they'll uh, address this problem uh, in, in, the, uh, in later releases. Anyway, it's enough of me rambling about this. Let's go ahead and uh, show some flight demo footage of this. So I don't know a whole lot about how to tune with race light because I, I'm not too familiar with the race light. Uh, I just try to approach it the same way I would tune beta flight. And one of the things I really missed here is the beta flight OSD to be able to make quick changes. I had to plug it into my laptop to get to tune to at least this level. And there's still a little bit of vibration and prop wash oscillation, uh, it's not all gone. And I did try my best to tune that out, but I just don't know enough about race flight to get that out of there. So that's something to consider if you're a beta flight flyer um, and not, not used to race flight, this may not be a product for you. Uh, but if you, if, you like, if you like race flight better than beta flight, then maybe you might want to check this out as one of those, very, this is one of the very few micros that have race flight on it. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.